Greetings, greenhouse people, and welcome to another installment of Tech on Demand, where our goal is always to bring you tips, tricks, and information to produce your best crops ever. I'm your host, Bill Calkins, and I'm happy to be joined once again by Andrew Britton, a greenhouse and nursery technical expert with a wide range of experience from large-scale production and propagation to technical services and even sales of foliage and tropical plants. Andrew's been a head grower, a young plants manager, and a production manager at some of the largest and most well-respected operations in North America, and today he's joining me to discuss controlling some of the most common diseases that impact tropical plants. If you haven't watched or listened to our previous discussion covering insects on tropicals, it's highly recommended. And you can find that video on the Ball Seed YouTube channel and the podcast on all the major podcast apps by searching Tech On Demand. Andrew, welcome. Thanks, Bill. It's good to see you again. You too. So before we dive head first into tropical and foliage plant diseases, is there any particular stage in production when these diseases are most prevalent? Or is this something our audience needs to stay on top of throughout the entire stage of the game? That's a, a tricky question. Uh, the, the reality is the biggest factor uh, for disease in plants is going to be the environment. So when you have, for most of these diseases that we're going to cover today, when you have hot, humid environment, it's very conducive for the disease to proliferate. So typically you'll see issues starting more frequently in propagation, as well as once the canopy of the plants has gotten pretty thick and you're not getting the air movement around the plants that you were before. But getting that hot, humid environment is generally where you're going to see most of these diseases pop up. But definitely stay diligent and uh, watch your plants and make sure that uh, you're, you're on protection all the time. And then that makes sense. And I think that that's good advice for all crops in pretty much any greenhouse. I hear that a lot from folks who, uh, who know a lot about disease issues, that it's really just a matter of having that diligence, starting clean, staying clean throughout the process, and uh, making sure that your entire team is on board with those kind of protocols. So let's jump right into the topic at hand. And that's really enough out of me. So why don't you share your screen and start running through the most prevalent diseases that our listeners should know about in an effort to minimize risk, maximize quality. And I know you have a long list and to be totally transparent, I've seen the list and there are actually a few on here I've never even heard of. So I'm gonna be learning along the way with the listeners and viewers. Thanks again, Bill. So when you talk about diseases in tropical plants, they're very similar to what you're going to see on bedding plants. Uh, we obviously have uh, very hot, warm, humid conditions here in South Florida. So the amount of diseases we see is pretty high. I wanted to start off with alternaria. You'll typically see when you have an alternaria infection, it's going to occur on your oldest leaves first. The lesions will typically be round and have brown spots with concentric rings within them. Oftentimes, you can see a yellow halo around the lesion on the leaf. It does produce spores, which can be spread by wind, water, and equipment. And this is one that is definitely going to be spread much more during warm, humid conditions. Some of the best recommended controls for alternaria are Dacano, Heritage, Medallion, Palladium, Trigo, and Trinity. I've added the uh, mode of action to all of these chemicals so that way you can work on making sure your rotation is not repeating the same mode of action so that you don't build up resistance. One of the more common ones up north is Botrytis. It first appears as a white growth on the plant which then eventually grows into a smoky gray spore, which can be spread by wind or water. You're going to see this disease typically show up on wounded plant parts or dead material, plant material. And you're going to see this much more prevalent in cool and humid conditions as opposed to alternaria, which is in warm humid conditions. That being said, us down here in South Florida, we don't see too much botrytis 
it's generally too warm at night. You need your night temperatures to be dropping below 70 degrees in order for botrytis to appear. Some of the best control options for botrytis are a stoon, daconil, chipco, pageant intrinsic, and medallion. And again, I have the mode of action listed here as well. The next one I want to review is Cercospora. This one typically affects the older leaves of the plants first before it spreads to the new ones. And once the leaf is severely infected, it will die from the lesions. When you have the high humidity in conjunction with the disease, you will get conidia, which are a spore. And the mature lesions are typically about an eighth inch in diameter. They're going to appear gray to brown color with a, with a purple border on them. They may also have a halo, as you can see in the photo. And you're going to see as time goes on that small black dots will appear within the grayish tan lesions. Some of the best control methods for Cercospora are Concert, Dacano, Heritage, Clean Grow, Mill Stop, and Protect. One that's a really big one on foliage items is Colatotricum. If you've had a spot on Sansevieria, most likely you've had Colatotricum. These typically appear as small water-soaked lesions on the leaves that become tan to dark brown or black in color. They typically are circular or irregular in shape and also may be surrounded by a yellow halo. You're typically going to see the infection start on young growth, more so than the older leaves. It favors warm, humid conditions again, and it's spread by splashing water. So some of the very best controls for Colatotricum are concert, mural, orchestra intrinsic, pageant intrinsic, Phyton 27, Spectro, and Trigo. Another disease that can commonly be seen in, in foliage items is Fusarium. This typically results in yellowing and stunting of plants. As the plants get infected, the lower leaves will typically turn yellow and dry. The xylem tissue turns brown. The disease will enter the plant through the roots and move up through the plant. And this is another one, Bill, that prefers warm and humid conditions. Some of the most recommended controls for Fusarium are Empress Intrinsic, Medallion, Torque, and Turney. Another disease that we'll commonly see in foliage items is Myrothesium. This will typically express itself as a leaf spot with concentric circles in the lesion. It's spread by splashing water. And you're going to see the young or injured tissue being the most susceptible to this disease. It again favors hot, humid conditions, and the spots will initially appear as water soaked lesions that are dark brown or black in color. Some of the very good controls for myrothesium are dacano, heritage, medallion, mural, and palladium. Phytophthora is another one that we can typically see within foliage plants, just like you can in bedding plants. It can present itself as either a root or a stem rot and even a leaf spot. You'll typically see purpling or reddening of older leaves. The symptoms will include damping off of the plants, stunting, yellowing, and browning lesions on the lower stem. As the disease develops, you'll typically get wilting plants, especially once the plants are under a stress condition. So you may have plants that look great in the morning, but as it gets hotter in the greenhouse during the day, they start to wilt. If uh, you do see that, that's typically going to be Phytophthora knocking your plants out. It will eventually result in the death of the plant. Some recommended controls for Phytophthora are Aliet, Fenstop, Mycora, Segovis, Segway, and Stature. Powdery mildew is another one that we don't see a ton of in Florida because of the fact that it does pre uh, prefer cooler, humid conditions. You'll typically see white powdery spots appear on the top of the leaf, which as it continues to develop will cover the underside of the leaf as well. Leaves of severely infected plants will typically turn brown and drop off the plant. 
and the disease prefers young growth, not normally affecting mature leaves. Some recommended controls for powdery mildew are Banner Max, Concert, Eagle, Millstop, Mural, Pageant Intrinsic, Turney, Trigo, and Trinity. Pythium is another one that's a real common one to see on foliage items, just like bedding plants. It will also cause the wilting and stunting of plants. The roots will typically be discolored and rotting. The cortex will oftentimes slough off, leading only vascular cylinder. This will make it look like a straw. The roots look like a straw. Infection is spread by the movement of infested soil or plant material, as well as irrigation water. And this is most likely going to occur on plants that have been overwatered. There are many recommended controls for Pythium as well. Empress Intrinsic, Phosphite, Segway O, Spectro, Subdue Max, Terrachlor, and Truban. Please be careful with Pythium because it does have some resistance to Subdue. Subdue has been used very often throughout the years, and uh, unfortunately, it's built up some resistance to it. So if you make an application to Subdue and it doesn't give you the control you need, make sure that you switch to another chemical class. Rhizoctonia is another one that is also very common, both in foliage and uh, bedding plants. It typically causes a stem and root rot. You'll see the rot right at the soil surface. It can cause wilting and stunting of the plants as well, and may eventually result in the death of the plant. It's spread by movement of soil, plant material, and tools, most prevalent on stressed or wounded plants. It also favors warm and wet conditions. Control of rhizoctonia can be done with 2636, Empress Intrinsic, Heritage, Medallion, Pan Pageant Intrinsic, Prostar, and Turney. Rust is one that we see on a lot of different foliage items. It initially starts off as a pale leaf spot that de develops into pustules producing spores. It's usually found on the other underside of the leaf. So you really want to be looking underneath your leaves for this disease. Typically, it's orange, yellow, brown, black, or white. The most common is orange. There are over 8,000 named species of rust, and it will only grow on living plants. So you're not going to see this develop on uh, decaying tissue. Some controls for rust are Cleary's 3336, Dithane, Eagle, Heritage, Mural, Orchestra Intrinsic, Protect, Triact, and Trinity. The last one I want to talk about is sclerotium. This is a disease that appears like rhizoctonia when it first starts with a brown to black rot at the soil surface. But one thing that's very different is you will see a white cottony growth cover the area. It is also spread with soil movement of infested plant material and contaminated equipment. And it typically develops during suboptimal growing conditions, also preferring warm, humid conditions. So there's a few of the most common diseases that we experience on foliage. That's... Uh... That is quite a list. I feel like you covered most of the alphabet if you're looking at an, an A to Z. Um, but but your the, the the photos, the descriptions are, are very clear and thorough. Uh, some of these do appear a, as others. So um, you know you mentioned early on the the diligence that it actually requires by a grower and and their entire team, um, especially when when I think about the fact that some of these diseases are spread by splashing water, moving plants, the tools, probably even people moving through the greenhouses. So it really is that 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 diligence uh, throughout all the steps in the process that's going to uh, offer offer some prevention. And then, you know, I, w when you when you talked about all the different controls, which I will link this slideshow in the video and podcast description so that the listeners and viewers can go back through and look at the recommendations as well as the mode of action codes, uh, which I'm glad you put on there because that's really going to be a way to to create effective rotations 
Um, but this, uh, I think, gives the, the listeners and viewers a fantastic resource of what to look for and when the hotspots occur and, if need be, ways to, to control these diseases. So thank you so much for taking the time to go through all of this. Before we close, is there anything we missed or anything you want to reiterate to the folks tuning in? Well, I really want to reiterate or sedate for the first time, actually, is that it's really a good idea as you come across diseases to keep a photo journal of those diseases. If you're in doubt as to what the disease is, send it to a lab and get it tested. And then make sure you attach that lab result to the photos that you've taken. It'll make it a lot easier to identify issues in the greenhouse at a much faster rate of speed instead of having to wait for it to go out to the lab and get tested. No, and that, that's really good advice. I think that's kind of the, the beauty of digital photography. Everybody's got a phone, take a picture of the problem, have a database where you can file these photos and go back when you're creating your production plans for the following year. Um, that's something that, that we talk a lot about uh, in, in Grower Talks and on our podcasts and videos is creating that history that you can go back, especially if you're adding new members to the team or uh, really want to, to get a jump start on your production plans for the following season. So that's, that's really, really good advice. Um, I, I really appreciate all your time and expertise, Andrew. Uh, you know, we mentioned it a couple times that disease prevention and management is really critical on, on any crop. Um, but certainly the high value tropicals and foliage that, uh, that folks are producing these days. So Thank you so much for, for your time and for putting this all together. My pleasure. And with that, I am Bill Calkins with Tech on Demand, wishing you all the best when it comes to your tropical plant production. Take care out there.